I'm Rob Huxley. I'm head of collections in the botany department. Sir Joseph Banks has been described as a botanist, an entrepreneur, a promoter of science, and a member of the landed aristocracy. But he was also a collector. Banks collected plants and animals and encouraged others to do so. These were a way of understanding the natural world. But also, there were evidence that could be used for economic gain. Knowing more about this in the natural world could be of benefit. It could bring wealth. Banks fundamentally saw slavery and the movement of plants as economics. And for economic reasons, Banks imported breadfruit from its native Tahiti to the Caribbean as a staple food for the enslaved Africans. At first, breadfruit was not widely accepted as a food amongst the enslaved people of the Caribbean, although now it is very much a staple in many regions of the tropics. It is very rich in starch and can be roasted, baked or fried. Europeans were really keen to bring as many plants as they could from all around the world. There was both power and prestige and perhaps most importantly profit involved. There were important commodities, foods like sugar, there was tobacco and cotton that fueled the industries here. But also there were important medicinal benefits as well. And of course for individual collectors there was the prestige of having specimens that nobody else had in their collections. Banks became, in effect, an advisor, a scientific advisor to the government at the time. He was also instrumental in the promotion of Kew Gardens. And this again links in with his interest in economic botany, as we would call it, how you can use plants to make money and feed people and do other things of that nature. He was appointed by the king as a special advisor on Kew Gardens, but in effect he became the director, even if he was never called that. And during his time there, he introduced 47 new plant species to Britain through the gardens. And his legacy of Kew Gardens and that, that fantastic collection we still have today. We also have another legacy. We have the legacy of his collection of plants and animals, his dried specimens which we have in the Natural History Museum. Banks's collections remain a valuable resource to this day. We can study them for science, but also we can learn about our colonial past.